Hello everybody, welcome to Drawing with Waffles, and today I thought I would show you how I draw straight hair. I'm going to show you two different styles, so I'm going to show you how to draw long straight hair, and then straight hair and a ponytail. Back when I was having trouble drawing straight hair, the thing that I realized that helped me the most was picturing the hair as like one piece, so it's like one shape, and the th I likened it to like a bed sheet kind of so when you draw like a bed sheet you know it looks it's what it's just a flat square so it's gonna look like that it's more like a rectangle but when you draw a flat bed sheet that's what it looks like now if you were to draw the bed sheet on say uh, snow globe <laughs> so if you draw the sheet on a snow globe with like I don't know cactus bloop, 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 bloop. and now we draw the bed sheet on top of that a snow globe it's going to hug the top hug the top and then once it hits the outermost edge it's going to fall straight down and it's going to wrinkle a little and then it's probably going to lay flat once it hits the ground so once it's on top of a snow globe it doesn't it's not the same shape as it used to be so it's very flimsy and it wraps around objects and that's how i like to picture straight hair so if we look at this head that i have previously drawn and we want to give her straight hair long straight hair we're going to first just like with the snow globe I'm going to hug the top of her scalp I'm just going to draw a line on top of that now we're going to decide on the two outermost points which is the back of her head here and then her forehead right there and so between these two sections we're going to just trace the top of our head now one thing to keep in mind is the longer the straight hair well the longer the hair the more and the more weight there's going to be so the more it's going to hug the scalp now if it's got short straight hair or short curly hair then it's going to be a bit higher and there's going to be more volume but I'm gonna be drawing long hair so it's going to hug pretty closely to the top of the scalp but you see I didn't trace the line completely I did go above the line so there's still a little bit of volume because hair is not completely flat usually but if that's what you're looking for you can definitely do that too so now we've traced the top to the outermost corners or sections of the head and what's very important is to think of the head in the 3d space so the head is not flat like this drawing is it's round like a snow globe like I drew earlier so hair is going to drape it just like it draped the snow globe so first we're going to take this outermost edge and we're going to just draw a straight line to the length of the hair we want straight hair straight line makes enough sense <laughs> Then we're going to draw the front of her hair. So we're just trying to outline the shape basically first. So if we want to give her bangs, we would give her bangs now, but I'm going to give her like, I don't know, I think some cutesy hair going behind the ear I think would be kind of cute. So we're going to take it from the outermost edge or wherever you want her hairline to end. And we're going to just draw straight to her ear with a little, it's going to be a little bit rounded. That was really squeaky. <laughs> it's going to round a little bit and it's going to go behind the ear. And we'll draw a couple strands so we know that the hair is being tucked behind the ear. And then from behind the ear, if you know it in your shape, like this flap right here sticks out a lot more and the ear kind of like connects more in the inner section, if that makes any sense. So we're going to draw a straight line from behind there. And this is when thinking of the person in the 3D space is very, very important. So we're going to draw and pretend we're tracing the outside of her shoulders here. And then once we reach the outermost edge, we're going to again draw a straight line. Now if you're having trouble picturing it in a 3D space, I'll draw some guidelines for you. So we know the shoulder sticks out, you know, like that. And we have her back. This is her outermost point on her back here. Her outermost point here is over here and for her shoulder which is where her hair is interacting with it it's actually going to be giving it a curve a little bit like that and then it's getting gonna go outwards if these guidelines help you you can definitely draw them but what you need to do is look at references look at pictures of people's back and realize what it looks like in a 3d space you know have your friend leg spin for you <laughs> and just look at the way their body is shaped and you'll see how the 3d space won't well, how the a body what's just what a body looks like you know and once you get a good idea of that it's definitely going to help and especially when you're drawing straight hair it's very important to remember your character in a 3d space because 
straight hair interacts with the environment a lot more than say curly hair so curly hair will still you know it'll go around the shoulders but you won't be able to tell as much because the hair on top is so curly it's going to distract from it so it's very important when you're drawing straight hair to picture your subject in a 3d space so now I have these guidelines made I can go ahead and draw little um, I don't know what you'd call them folds in the hair so we're still thinking of it in shape so if this is a shape it's going to curl around like that but it's gonna for the most part just go straight down and then we get to decide how we want her hairline to be if you want it straight across or if you want it to taper a little bit either way is fine that's your decision I'm just gonna do a straight I think but if we look at this hair it's curling behind the ear this hair isn't so it's going to actually be longer here than it is here so I can I can just guess and say that it's gonna be more like that shape on the bottom and what's also really fun to do to make your hair look more like hair and less like a bed sheet is to add little triangles that are cutting out of her the bottom of her hairline and you could also take from the bottom or the top of that triangle and trace upwards a little bit. That one's a little too curvy. Just draw some straight lines. This guideline is a little bit in the way. Now when it comes to drawing little hair strands within this outline of the hair, one thing that I really like to do is to randomize the lines that I'm using. So what I like to do is draw one and then maybe a two. Does that make sense? Like two lines and a one line. It's not completely random because I'm, I always do this. And if you look through my drawings, you'll probably notice it. But it makes it look more random, I think. And I definitely think it adds a texture to the hair that otherwise wouldn't be there. And then I'm thinking with this hair, it's just a little too plain. This might be what you're looking for. That's fine if that's what you want. But I want to add two strands coming out from... How about... I guess they would be coming from here and they're gonna go in front of the shoulder. Because again, we're interacting with the character in the 3D space, so it's gonna go in front of the shoulder. And then the same would happen on the other side. And since her head's turning and her body's more this way, it's going to come about there, I think. And then I'm gonna just color this in so that you can see what we're working with. So now we have the basic shape of the hair, we have a few strands added in, and then what I think makes hair look just that much better when we're drawing in like a cartoon and we're not doing realistic hair. But I think one little thing that I've learned recently that just, I mean, it just, it's like the cherry on top of the sundae, and that is adding little strands of hair because hair is not like a tablecloth, you know, it's not going to be a perfect shape. There is going to be some that are like, you know, escaping and doing whatever they want. So I like to add those in. And so it's basically, we'll just take take your pen or your tablet or whatever you're drawing with, and we're going to find sections where the hair would start. So it's going to start at this part, and it's going to come and then curl around. So we're and what's very important when you're doing this is to do one long sweeping motion and just let it do whatever it wants because it's hair and that's what it likes to do. So we're going to make sure that's what it's doing. And what you don't want to do is draw like if we're going to like draw if we're going to draw something like that. What you don't want to do is like, you know, like, okay, I want it to be perfect, so I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw it perfect, and then you get this, like, weird-looking line that's not what you want. When it comes to hair, you want it very flowy, and you want it to be organic, and that, that, not that. So I'm just going to add a few of these, and it's f basically following the rhythm of the rest of the hair, but it's just, like, that one strand that just escaped. And you can add that wherever you want, and again, think of the character in a 3D space. And don't worry about the undo button if you're doing digitally or erasing it if it doesn't turn out right the first time. Now I'm going to draw it again, the same hairstyle, but from a different angle so that we can, you know, picture it more in a 3D space like I keep telling you about because it's very important when it comes to hair and drawing in general. So what we're going to do is copy this hairstyle, but on this head. And so if I look at this, she has a middle part. So I can just go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to go right down the middle, just picture where that is. I'm going to draw a line so that I know I have a guideline of where it is. And then, like the first time, we're going to, what? We're going to hug the top of her head and reach the two outermost points, which is here and here. I did not pick the right color. It's kind of hard to tell. But we're going to just hug it and trace the top of our sketch. 
And what I like to do with parts is definitely add a little bit of a bevel and like an indent where the part is because it just makes, it exaggerates it a little bit more and I think it looks cute. Just like we did before, we're going to reach the outermost points and draw straight lines. And since the hair is going behind her, we can just, that's a little too far over, we can just end right at the shoulder and the same on this side. Draw a straight line. And she doesn't have bangs, so we can again create this shape, but from this angle. And so what we're going to do is think of the forehead in a 3D space. The forehead sticks out a little bit more. Then beneath the eyebrow, it's going to stick in a little bit so we can curve it a little bit faster until it reaches the ear. And if you see here, my line didn't end up right where the ear connects, so I'm actually going to redraw that, but come down a little bit farther, whereas this one wasn't overlapping the eye. So if we want to redo this, we can erase it. And what needs to happen is I need to curl faster. So again, forehead sticks out the most in the 3D space, then it's going to curl a little bit faster once it reaches the eyebrow, because that curls in a little bit more. So now we have this shape, it's much more similar to that one. And then I'm going to draw the same thing on the other side, but I never drew that so we get a little bit more creative liberty and we're the artists so we get to do what we want anyway. And we're, I'm going to take it again from the center and just recreate that part on the other side. Now we have these two strands of hair that come in front of the ears, which I'm going to redraw. And now we're going to take right in front of the ear, draw a straight line till we hit her shoulder and we're going to do the same thing for a little bit farther forward. And once we hit the shoulder again, we need to remember 3D space and her breasts are going to stick out a little bit more. So once they hit here, this is when I think we're going to start curling them around. And I like to taper it off, especially with straight hair, actually with any hair, depending on the haircut, but I do like to taper it just so it looks a little bit more like hair. And we're going to do the same in front of this ear, straight line till we hit a shoulder. And it's going to curl a little bit because it's going to rely on gravity to do its thing since this is straight hair and it's not very voluminous so that's why it's very important like I keep saying to think of it in a 3d space because the hair is very flat and it's going to hit whatever it is touching and it's going to react to it I'm just gonna color this in so we know what we're working with and then I'll add or I'll show you where I'm going to add the uh, strands for the hair so now that I have it all colored in, if you notice, it kind of looks like a bed sheet right now. It's very simple. There isn't any strands going on here. So if we look at my reference over here, I created little strands sticking out from behind the ear to, you know, give the illusion that it is being tucked behind the ear. So we're going to add a few of those. Again, I'm doing the rhythm of the two and one. So anywhere I draw two, I'm going to draw one somewhere probably. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think it looks cool. So I thought I would tell you. We're going to do the same on the other side, and again from behind her ear. And to determine where you want to put these, any point where the hair is bunching up, you want more lines. And where the hair is not bunching up, you don't want more lines. So the top of your head is usually very, I don't know, it's un untampered with because it's just on top of your head and that's where it lays all the time and it's where it was grown to be and it's, you know, it's just natural. Whereas the part, your hair is splitting. So there is going to be a little bit of bunching around that area. I don't usually like to draw that just because I like it to be a little bit more simple, but if you want to, you can definitely put it there. And anywhere where the hair looks too plain for you, you can always add it like back here. That wasn't really necessary, but I again use my technique with a one stroke and then two strokes. And now, just like we did on that side, we are going to add just a few random strands because, like we said before, hair doesn't always do what it, you want it to. So we're just going to add a few of these anywhere we want them to be. Oop, that one's a little too extreme. And then we have straight, long hair. And I'm going to show you how to do it in a ponytail. When you're drawing straight hair in a ponytail, it is... You use basically the same principles as we did when we were drawing the hair down. So we're going to hug the top of her scalp like we did before. We have the two outermost points. And then you need to decide where you want the ponytail to be. Do you want it to be a high ponytail, a low ponytail, a middle ponytail? I'm just going to do a middle ponytail because, you know what, I'm just going to average it out and pick the one in the middle. So I'm going to take this point right here and I'm going to draw a little tiny rectangle for the ponytail holder. Now with straight hair, 
it's going to have a lot of leeway and it's not going to be completely tight because it's going to start falling out because straight hair can't hold the ponytail very well. So we can take into account that the hair is probably going to dip down a little bit and then get pulled into it. Again, like we said, where we're going to put the lines is anywhere that the hair is being bunched up, we're going to add more of these um, lines to give the illusion that, you know, this is hair. It's kind of like where you would put wrinkles on anything. So again, I'm talking about like the reference to the bed sheet. Anywhere where it wrinkles, it's going to get bunched up and it's going to create, you're going to need more lines. Now hairline comes down this way too, so it's definitely going to get pulled up this way and into there. And we're going to take from the scalp and we're going to pull straight back. Because the hair on the top is going to be tighter than the hair on the bottom if the ponytail is slipping down. So we're probably going to get a little bit of a bunching down here. So I'm going to draw almost a straight line down and then it's going to like abruptly stop because it's straight hair. It's going to go back into the scalp. And I'm going to draw the hairline just so that I know where it is. And that actually looks pretty good because your hairline, depending on the nationality of your subject, will be different. But I'm liking the way this looks. And again, we're going to we're going to copy this shape now with the rest of the lines. We're going to pull back and get pulled into there. So it's loose, but then it's got to attach to the scalp. And then the higher you get, the less extreme that shape's going to be. And this one's actually a little too extreme for where it is. It needs to be a little looser. And now if we want to make it look like the same character, we can actually take her strands of hair that go in front of her ears. Just because I think they look really cute. And I actually went too far because they're supposed to be in front of the shoulders. Then we're going to draw the ponytail. When I draw ponytails, I like them to be like, ooh, yeah, so much fun, ponytails. <laughs> but still, but when it comes to straight hair, they don't usually look like that unless they tease them in some way. So we're going to keep to the theme of straight hair. And we're going to come straight down from the corner of the ponytail holder that we drew. So to draw a straight ponytail, we're going to take from this section. It is going to stick out a little bit. So we're going to draw maybe like the same size as the ponytail holder. And then we're going to draw straight down. This is just to give, that's too long. But <laughs> this is just so we have a guideline of where we want the hair and how long we want the hair. And we're just going to draw a simple triangle above that. And it's going to come down a little bit because hair is n it's very pliable and it likes to do whatever it wants. Since the hair is bunching up, it's not going to be a completely straight line like when we had it um, with the hair down. So there is going to be much rounded, it's much more rounded than we drew previously. So it's just going to curve around. And what you want to think of is like a teardrop shape, but only half of it. So we're only drawing the one line on the side of it. So we're just teardropping it. We can draw maybe like one strand that just like is having fun up here. It's going to get very thin by the time it gets to the bottom because hair does taper by the time it gets to the bottom. Unless you just got to cut, but I think with straight hair it's really cute if we do, if we taper down at the bottom. And then I'm going to color it in so that we can see. And just so we can see what we did in a 3D space, I'm going to redraw it on this head. We're going to hug the scalp. We're not going to be able to see the ponytail because it's going to be about here, but on the back of her head. So knowing that, we can use that to figure out where to put everything else. But we have a middle part, and I'm going to... Little straw. What does that look like? It looks like two plates on the top of her head. And we're going to use that to come around. And like we see this line comes down and then back up, so we're going to use that same... I mean, why redo your work when you've already done it yourself? So that's cool. We have the two hair strands that come out in front. Those are a little thinner than the last time we did them, so we're gonna add more. Hair is bunching up in the back, so we're gonna add more strands near the back of her scalp. And then to create this shape down here, we're going to pull down. And almost, it's almost a right angle, but not quite. That's basically what we'll be able to see, except we can definitely add the ponytail because there's all this space down here. 
And where did I say the ponytail is going to be? About here. So knowing that, we can draw a straight line from there. And there's the ponytail. So now if we color it in. Now a lot of trouble I see new artists have when they draw a ponytail from this angle, especially, is they'll draw it straight out of here. So they'll have their ponytail and it's like that. And that doesn't make sense, especially when you're thinking of the character in a 3D space, it's going to be behind the head, which is why you can only see this much of the ponytail, which a lot of artists, you know, kind of get shied away from that because they're like, well, I want him to know it's a ponytail. And they're kind of like underestimating the ability of the human brain to realize, you know, that's a ponytail. <laughs> It's very good to create a bit more of the lines towards the edge. So it's like it's bunching up as if we go around the head. And just having it there and, you know what, just hoping that they can figure it out. And sometimes we don't need to tell them everything. We don't have to tell them it's a ponytail. When you see a girl from the front and she has her hair in a ponytail, you don't assume she's bald or she has short hair. You might look like she does, but you assume, you know, she has a ponytail human brain is smarter than you think it is and yeah we can picture that there's a ponytail back there now one thing I did forget about this is to add those little strands the free strands so we're just going to like roughly trace the outside border of what we drew previously and that's where we get those so basically just trace anywhere that we have hair originally and we're going to just add a few more strands just so we know it's free hair Ta-da! anyway that's how I draw straight hair either down or in a ponytail let me know if this helped you because I'm roughly new to doing tutorials and I'm trying to get better and people keep asking me how I do things so I'm trying to practice doing tutorials so that I can get better at them and tell you how to do more complicated things drawing straight hair is one of the simpler things that you can learn how to do so I thought I would start with that let me know if you want me to show you how to do curly hair or like naturally curly hair where it's like super curly or different types of hairstyles that you'd like me to show you how to draw or any other things that you'd like me to demonstrate how I draw them Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys all next week.